there. I'm here to talk about the new Sony a7 II. This is quite an upgrade from the previous Sony a7. A lot of little features and one big feature that I'm really a fan of. I have liked the Sony a7 fairly well with the exception of the shutter noise and an alleged vibration at about a sixtieth of a second. And although I haven't experienced it, I've stayed away from a sixtieth of a second, I haven't found myself taking really slow shutter speeds. However, one of the things that the new Sony a7 II offers is 5-axis in-body image stabilization. Now, this is not a brand new feature, although it's the first on a full frame. Olympus uses it as their primary mode of Im image stabilization. Panasonic has used it on the GX7 in addition to the lens-based image stabilization. In this instance, any lens-based stabilization is in addition to or in conjunction with the in-body stabilization so that you can use a stabilized lens such as this uh, f4 zoom and the in-body stabilization together Sony claims up to five stops of image stabilization between the two. I did some testing this morning and I was very pleased with my results. It was a little rushed but nonetheless what I did was took the two cameras out using both the Zeiss 55 f1.8, the Sony 35 to 56, switching them back and forth. Here are the results I came out with. At a 30th of a second at f1.8 on the A7, this is the image I achieved. This has a, a processing adjustment to the exposure of 1.4 stops. This next frame is at 0.5 seconds, a half a second at f5 with the a7 II. This has no exposure compensation and as you can see it's pretty clean. The next shot is a half second exposure at f5 with the a7. This is a 0.4 exposure compensation additional. As you can see it's not particularly sharp. The next shot here is a 20th of a second at f1.8 with the a7 II, half a stop shutter exposure compensation. And the last one is a fifth of a second at f4 with the a7 II, half stop exposure compensation. So you can see that at a half second, I was able to use the a7 II to successfully record a pretty darn sharp image. If you look at the center of that image, and I'm going to blow it up. There's a, there's a little sign in the center of that image. And I'm going to blow it up for you and show you it at 400% uh, magnification. And you can see it's, it's pretty sharp. What you do see on some of these images when they aren't sharp is you actually see a trail as opposed to a blur. In the past, I pretty much limited myself to a 15th of a second with my Fuji and my Panasonic Lumix GX7. I found that at a 15th of a second, I could routinely achieve a good sharp image. At an eighth, it was very haphazard. 25 to 30% of the time, I would get a decent image. What I have found with the Sony is that at a half a second, which is a full two stops slower, that I can get a good image with some degree of success. And I think a half second is a very slow handheld shot, which I wouldn't normally recommend to anybody. There are times, however, when the ability to take a shot at that slow of a speed is a real advantage. What is additionally important about that is if it will stabilize a shot that's handheld at a half a second, it will also help you with a zoom lens just as much, if not more. So that's a real benefit there too. There are some other features that are also interesting. The new camera has this tilting display. I have found them useful at times in the past. The rotating ones, not so much, but the tilt, 
I like to get above my work sometimes, put the camera on the ground, and this can be very useful for that. I have also been known to put the camera over my head in a group and use it like that. So it's a, an interesting feature at least and of some help. Another improvement in my book is that it now uses the magnesium body that it shares with the A7R, whereas the A7 had a composite body. Not a huge difference, but magnesium does tend to be pretty durable. Composite, I'm not gonna say it's less durable. Magnesium feels more solid. As you can see, we have a bigger grip and the shutter button is here on top rather than back on the body. And it falls much more easily to the natural lay of your finger. I also noticed they have included one extra of these custom buttons. They've put two on the top as opposed to one on the old, old body. And you have a third and the fourth in the same position the second and third were on the uh, A7. So that is the, the sum of most of the improvements to the camera. I think the image stabilization in body is a huge, significant difference. I'm reluctant to call it a game changer, but for those of us who only use image stabilized lenses because of our unsteady grip or gait, that it becomes a huge factor especially when you're using lenses like the Zeiss 55 1.8, which is a very sharp lens, but if you don't hold it steady, there's not much point. The very nice 16 to 35 F4 Zeiss zoom that is not image stabilized will benefit from that in body stabilization and will make this lens the equivalent of an F2 lens. So that's a pretty fast zoom. So I would have to say, for me, the in-body stabilization was very much worth the upgrade in price. And right now, I'm gonna throw this in too, there is a fabulous deal on these A7s. If you combine them with a, with a battery vertical grip or with a lens or both, they give you a pretty nice discount. You wind up with a camera body for in the neighborhood of $1,000. And I think for an extra 100 or so, you get the grip thrown in and you save 100 or 200, depending on the lens that you purchase. So right now, when we're talking Christmas time of 2014, very good time to pick up this body. I would probably still want to have the a7 II in my bag. I carry two cameras. I'll use the a7 II as my primary, especially whenever I need a nice, crisp, slow shutter speed, because this has just added a whole new dimension to how slow you can take that shutter speed down to and still get a nice, crisp image. So I'm pretty enthused about the new Sony a7 II. I'd still like to see them quiet the shutter down just a pinch for me, but it's not unbearable. I, I think this is uh, an excellent camera. I still like the Fuji control slightly better. I like the ISO as a dial, but this one does a, a good, good job with most of the controls. I like the fact that you can access the SD card, the memory card through the side and there are a lot of nice things about this camera. So I'm gonna finish up with two last things. They do claim an improved autofocus. I did seem to notice in the dark a little less hunting with the new autofocus system, and it was very dark. This continues the Wi-Fi NFC connections too, so that may be a very important issue to some of you too. All in all, I think the Sony a7 II is a significant upgrade to an already good camera, and I would, I would not hesitate to recommend this over 
the Nikon full frame or the Canon full frame. I think it's a much better value for your money. And I think Sony is much more innovative in bringing forward the in-camera image stabilization. One thing I want to let you know about is if you use Lightroom, you need to upgrade to the latest version or it will not handle the new raw files. So that's uh, just, a, just a caveat there. But this is a great camera and if you're thinking about going for it, I would not hesitate to recommend it. So give it a try.